Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> it was an exciting day. I hope you all had fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed the problem. The competition definitely appeared to be a very fierce and uh, exciting competition. You could tell that by the fact that pretty much nothing was happening in, the caf in cafeteria. Like everybody was very focused at work. The first time we, uh, we ran the final round of Hashcode, uh, when we brought in food, it was a big thing. Everybody jumped to the food. So uh, either the food here is less interesting than the one we had in Paris, or the event has become a little bit more competitive. And I really like the pasta, so I don't think it's the problem with the food. Yeah, even when I announced that there's like food till 2 p.m., like nobody got up to run for the food. So Yeah, we, we, we thought you didn't notice, so we made the announcement, but people were still coding. Maybe some people didn't eat. I right. Don't know. Uh, wrapping up, <laughs> uh, wrapping up the introduction. Uh, speaking of food, uh, this is the last thing we are going to do before pizza. So if you are hungry, don't worry. Uh, in this final section, we would like to uh, go over the problem very quickly, uh, share a little bit of trivia from the night with you, announce the winners, and uh, wrap up the fifth edition of Hashcode. So without further ado. Um, we are going to very quickly cover the problem itself because we are live streaming this closing ceremony and people on the live stream uh, uh, are not yet familiar with the problem. So the competition problem was about uh, planning a big construction project in a district of a city. The input of the problem was a list of different building projects. And there were two different types. There were residential buildings like this, described by their shape and by the number of people or families that could live there. So here we have two different projects of residential buildings with different capacities. The other type of project that uh, was possible to be constructed were utility projects. Those didn't have any people living there, but they had types. So here's type one, maybe it's a shop, and here is type two, maybe it's a park, nice green park. So now the task for, for the contestants, for you, uh, was to put those building projects on the map, constructing a new district in the city. And uh, the points were awarded for a single person having an access within the walking distance to a single utility. So here we have 60 people living in the area. If we put a park in between of those uh, buildings, you could see that all uh, 60 people have access to the park. It is within the walking distance, so the, uh, this submission would get 60 points uh, for this arrangement. If we add a shop on top, we can see that 40 people have access to it, giving a total of 100 points. That's the problem. The final thing I want to say about the problem is that we thought that even for a hash code problem is going to be a fairly hard problem. Because we, when we were thinking about this, we, were pretty much no, we had pretty much no intuitions as to what would be the right solutions. Like, do you put the residential buildings first and then throw utilities around, or do you start with utilities? Do you alternate? Or maybe the difficult part of the problem is actually not that, but fitting two concave shapes together so that they don't take much space. We didn't know. Um, we'll uh, learn a little bit about what was hard and what was easy from the winners of Hashcode, uh, as we are going to quiz them on stage. But uh, that will follow in a couple of minutes. And now uh, let's move on to the trivia from the evening. 
Yeah, so we uh, collected some interesting facts about the competition. So we're not going to announce any winners right now. It's just like what happened throughout the competition. Let's get started. And the first thing that happened is that I had a bet with Max how long it's going to take for the first valid submission to be submitted in the judge system. And I was saying it's going to take less than 60 seconds. And Max was saying that it's going to 61 seconds or more. Um, I lost the bet by Three seconds. And congratulations to Heisen Heisenbach Certainty Principle team. It would, be it would have been slightly better if you were just a tiny little bit faster, but it was still a good achievement. So congratulations. <laughs> and uh, it, it is notable that uh, this was actually a better submission than the one uh, we had in the example, uh, example output in the, in the problem statement. <laughs> well, many beautiful inventions in the history of the world happened by, uh, by accident. You improved the solution, so... <laughs> That's like genetic algorithms, right? Um. All right. Um, then we come to the first submission, which was actually powered by code. So I did some maths, and I realized that um, that team spent about um, 1,000 points, improved by about 1,000 points per second, um, just like calculating the first. So this is a programming athlete from Russia. They scored almost 2 million points. In 24 so minutes. Um, those of you who uh, have been with us uh, last year, I uh, might remember that we wanted to award uh, uh, or to recognize teams who uh, were able to submit solutions without ever submitting an invalid solution, but last year there were no such teams. Uh, this year we have four teams that uh, competed and never submitted uh, an invalid solution. Uh, so those are No Future, Demi Bytes, Byte IT, and Le Vieux Kimonge. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, this brings us to like a very typical subject about programming competitions, right? So, uh, of course, we had to compute some statistics about uh, programming languages. So, the first one, um, I don't fully know, but like people seem to like objects, I suppose, because the first one is C sharp. So, uh, maybe somebody convinced the rest of the team that like uh, it's not going to be C++, but C sharp, right? It can happen. Um, on the second place, uh, that might have been me because I actually like Python myself. Uh, they score second. Um, then, what is really, really surprising to me, I would actually like to know in what kind of engine that thing was running to uh, actually compete at that, because on the third spot, there's JavaScript. So, um, very impressive to me, like somebody, some one team managed to like solved a problem or attempt a problem in JavaScript, uh, getting actually quite some points. Very impressive, right? Um, you might guess it. So um, on the second place, there's Java. And finally, the majority, like uh, almost every team, actually used C++. Now for the data sets part, um, every year we uh, put the competition together. We try to uh, find uh, a few data sets that are very different. So our ideal situation is if each of, data sets, uh, if each of the data sets uh, actually requires a different approach, a different solution. And um, what we are going to show you is uh, we are going to uh, display the best team that did the best on each individual data set. And as you will see, it's not like one team was the best on all of them. So, tractor specialists won on the <laughs> example problem. <laughs> and uh, also worth noting is that a lot of teams scored 75, a lot of teams scored 100. Actually, we didn't know that it's possible to get 125. <laughs> 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 the, the, the first time we saw that, I was afraid that we have a bug in the score. But <laughs> Apparently, it's actually possible. Um, now, for the team that won on the problem B, um, 
We have an idea for how to pronounce the name, but we are not going to reveal it yet. Um, Promel number C was one, but an IN team. Dataset D was Pitypunk. Dataset E was Programming Athlete from Russia. And Dataset F was Warsaw Robots. I think, I think that really shows that there's not just one solution which solves everything. So every team had different implementations. And the implementation does super well on one problem, but not on the other. And I think that's really, really good. And if we were to do sort of, comp if we were to compile like all stars team with all of you competing together, uh, the total score of such a submission was actually many millions points better than the, the score of the team that won Hashcode this year. So if you would have 41 million, you would have easily won the competition, just for your information. <laughs> Next year. All right. Um, this is a screenshot of the frozen scoreboard as of uh, one hour before we finished. You might just know it, right? Um, not all teams remained there, just saying. So we're all excited to see um, what the results were. All right, that's it for trivia. And with that, we are going to announce the top 10 teams of Hashcode 2018. So the way we are going to go about this is for the next seven teams, we are going to announce those teams one after another. And what we ask those teams is that when you hear your name, please stand up, smile, wave to everybody so that we can congratulate you all, and then sit down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, position number 10. It's getting exciting. Who might it be? Actually, this team was not on the slide just before. So this team is not on the frozen scoreboard. So we want to congratulate uh, the team moving from position number 12 to position number 10. Please congratulate Vasolian. Congratulations. Position number nine. Uh, according to our records, that was the first team to submit solutions for all data sets, although one of those data sets got a score of zero at that time. <laughs> um, finishing up on the position number nine, team NCA. Please get up. Congrats. We move on to uh, position number eight. Um, this was the first team to score um, above like a magical mark, which seemed to have to be 30 million. So the team is Blin. Congrats. On position number seven, um, that was the team that submitted apparently a first actual solution at 11.45.09 seconds, submitting a code of 193 lines of code and scoring 100 points on example one. And their name is MIPT Amethyst's Content. Congrats. Which brings us to number six. Um, they did something great. They uh, submitted after 33 minutes a solution which was able to get points on every data set. Uh, yes. So compared to the previous thing we said, they did not get that zero on one of the data sets. Uh, 33 which minutes in, uh, into the competition. Which brought them one uh, spot up. So. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, Team number six are Warsaw Rubarts. <laughs> now, the team that finished at the position number five um, was the 
team to send the first submission that got more than 200 points at 11.45, 45 seconds. Those are also the winners for the dataset B, short walk, and their name is Programming Athlete from Russia. Congrats. All right, we get to uh, the fourth place. Mm. I have to announce very sad news about the fourth place. Um, it's a very successful team, and unfortunately, they only scored fourth. It's uh, the winners from last year, AIM Tech. Congrats. <laughs> Anyway, thanks guys for always scoring high. You um, uh, really rise the level of the competition. All right, um, we're getting to the top three. We are going to have to change the methodology a little bit. Yes, so actually, uh, there's a nice staircase over there. Right. Here. And uh, please use the staircase to get um, up on the stage um, if you see your team name over here you will get a medal. And on your way uh, back from the stage, you will be able to collect uh, prizes. Also, there's a cup, but that's just for the first prize. Right. <laughs> All right. So uh, it was very interesting to watch the unfrozen scoreboard in real time between 4 and 4.20 uh, PM uh, today, because there were three teams that kept alternating their position on the first spot. So um, the scoreboard was changing very rapidly, and those three teams are the teams that ended up winning. Uh, so in particular, the team that ended up on the third position more than once was actually leading the competition in the, in the final half an hour. Um, those, uh, this team is the team that, win on, that won on dataset C, going green, and their name is NIN Team. <laughs> stand here, <laughs> like there is this line here, like that will be best for the picture. <laughs> like? Perfect. Congrats for scoring third in this year's edition. Awesome, congrats. Congrats. the medal. So wait, 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 wait. If you could please stay. So uh, before we go, we have two questions for you. The first question is, um, what approach do you use to solve the problem? Who is the spokesperson? So uh, we use just a greedy approach. Of course, uh, it is very slow to try to place any building in any possible position. So we split um, board in several parts and solve them independently, almost independently. For the second question, uh, we noticed that you improved a lot between the scoreboard freeze and the, the final result. So you moved from position eight to position three. Could you tell us what was happening in the last hour of the competition? Were you feeling that you are improving or you were, you were not sure? Actually, we just submitted uh, test F. We have zero points before the scoreboard <laughs> was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have about Eight million points, so we improved our position. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. NIN team, uh, position three, bronze medal, Hashko 2018. 
All right, um, we're getting to the second place. Um, we know that just three minutes before the competition finished, there was exactly 1,000 points between position one and two. Very, very small margin. Yeah. Um, they were, in the end, the winners of the problem D, white selection. If you remember who that was, you know the answer. I, I, I remember who that was, and that was a team called uh, Piti Pang. Congrats. <laughs> Very well done, congratulations. The question for you is about teamwork. So we, uh, when we started Hashcode, we really wanted this to be a team programming competition. And we wanted to ask the team that ended up in position number two, how were you working in a team? How were you splitting and organizing the work? Was it difficult? Was it easy? Did you have any strategies? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it was uh, difficult enough for us, but we participate uh, in other competitions uh, together. Not all four of us, but uh, me and Alexei and me and Ilya in other competitions, so we have some experience. But uh, okay, in first hours we got um, some problems with teamwork and. I think we were not even in top 20, but after that we somehow figured out how to how how to solve this problem. Good enough. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think was the hardest part about the problem? <laughs> Maybe it was easy for you. You scored second. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to say something? Uh, probably uh, the hardest part was uh, to come up with something that work, and uh, it was hard to get uh, any non-zero points. But when you get some solution, you can improve, and it's easier, I think. Thank you very much. The team Pity Punk, position number two, uh, Silver Mada at Hashko 2018. <laughs> Congratulations. You can collect your prize right now. All right. Uh, the tension is getting high. Who is going to take home this cup or that cup? We're talking about the winners of Hash Code 2018. Exciting. It is exciting. I have to say that. There was a part of the jury meeting that was really like not planned. We had a very interesting discussion that was not in the program. The discussion was about how are we going to pronounce the name of the team. <laughs> but in the end, I think we got it right. So yeah. the winners of Hashcode 2018 are emojis of four people staring at their laptop. Take, take 
Congrats for winning Astro this year. Congrats. Could you tell us what is the winning solution? <laughs> uh, I guess we have a different approaches for different uh, test sets. We had uh, one of the main idea is to not solve the whole uh, board of the city and just to split it into small districts, solve the one district and fill it up with the one district which are all the same. So, and then we have different approaches to solve, construct this decret for, for different test cases. Um, I guess half of the test cases were solved more uh, by hand. By Actually, no, I think only one test case uh, finally has been solved by hand. It's uh, test case B, when we, and we won this test case. Actually, yeah, it was uh, solved by, oh, okay. Uh, Maybe in D. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, main idea is just to split two districts. And uh, after some greedy solutions, I also use the solution that optimize after that, uh, make some small changes and uh, think, is it better or not? If, if it's better, we continue from uh, this new position. Very impressive. But uh, we also have to ask the obvious question. Did we correctly pronounce your team name? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're satisfied? So it's a mod, it's of four people staring at the laptop. Or do you have a different... <laughs> at the screen for sure. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, that's a mod, it's of four people staring at the screen. Collect your prizes on your way uh, back. Thank you, Max, and goodbye. All right. Um, I think um, it was really, really impressive work by everyone. Um, thanks, everyone, for tra uh, traveling to Dublin. I think you actually had quite some fun. At least we have uh, really, really great photos of um, people having fun at, um, at the office. <laughs> if you uh, don't have enough, ah, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to please look at this part of the slide. <laughs> um, here, we had to anonymize uh, the contestants, so. Um, because of that, like, uh, like we can't do anything else, like there's nothing else, please read this part of the slide, which essentially means um, if you want to further improve your solution, you want to um, play a bit around, uh, we're going to reopen the um, uh, competition till uh, May the 7th. It will actually be also open for people from the online qualification round, um, so many more people can compete. Um, now you got a sneak peek into Live at Google. If you want to have uh, more insights, uh, follow us at Live at Google. It's available on all the social um, media like uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, if you're really, really interested, uh, you can of course check out uh, careers.google.com. Um, um, there's opportunities like for full-time or for students and internships. Um, so actually, I have two of these hats because at some point I was an intern, and then, thanks God, when I joined again, uh, they gave me a second of these hats. Um, what's next for Hashcode? So, of course, this year's competition is over, the finals are over, 
Um, as was mentioned several times uh, um, during the panel, um, we're going to open up the competition a bit wider, so we're going to expand it for more developers around the world. It's going to be more exciting. I highly suspect that during the next finals there will be teams from Asia, Australia or um, America. Let's see. Um, if you're not done, um, all the um, coding competitions by Google are available on this website called codingcompetitionswithgoogle.com, so you don't have to search for CodeGem once the next time for hash code, and so on. Um, please check it out. Uh, from that, I would like to say thanks to all the volunteers. Most of the people here do this as their 20% like, project. Um, or just showing up to help us. It would be really, really impossible to run this entire thing without them. Um, please applaud to all the volunteers from the competition. <laughs> this concludes today. Uh, we have nothing else to do but uh, eating pizza. Um, enjoy. Thanks a lot, everyone.